Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a video where I share my planner system for 2022. Yes, it is February 18th when I'm filming this. I know that it's late and I mentioned in my last video what I've been up to lately. And thank you all for sticking around and I hope you're excited to see how I'm using a new to me system. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that for 2022, I am in a Wonderland 222 dated planner. I chose the B6 size and I decided to switch over for a few reasons. In 2021, I loved my bullet journal. I started in April and went really, really strong until September, beginning of October, right when I got my teaching contract. And then I quickly realized that the flexibility and openness that I love in the bullet journal didn't translate well into what I needed when I was in the classroom. And so I tried a few different things to make it work. I did try to make my own weekly layouts, so I had some structure, but I wasn't doing it consistently and I wasn't in there consistently. So I knew that starting 2022, I wanted a planner that already had the structure built in, but still allowed me some flexibility to do the kind of rapid logging, memory keeping, bullet journal style that I love. You might remember that I originally wanted to try standard this year, but the standard inserts from Pebble Stationery Co., the one that was formatted for the undated planner was a horizontal layout similar to the Hobonichi Weeks. And I know that I work best with a vertical layout. I like making lists in column format and my eyes just naturally move from left to right instead of top to bottom. So I decided to try the Wonderland 222. There are some great review videos that compare kind of the specs of the planner and the three different sizes. I believe they offer A6, B6, and A5. What you're seeing on top here is actually the half year notebook. It's just because I didn't want us to get a glare. So this is the notebook in the front and this is the full year in the back. And let's get into the planner and how I'm using it. So I do have it in a Wonderland 222 clear cover. So it has a pocket here. And in the back, it has a pen loop if you wanna keep your pen in this. I do have a leather cover I'm using with this right now and I will show that at the end of the video. So I guess I can do a bit of a flip through and just talk through how I've set it up and how I've been using it. So in the front here, I had a lot of fun deciding how to set this up and figuring that I wanted it to feel warm and cozy this year. So I just glued down some scrapbook paper. This is a card from Brandy Kincaid. I've subscribed again to her extravagant hope mailers and I love her art and her messages. I have stickers here from Audrey Okea and this is a vinyl that Dakshina made and sent me that I love. This month, my Tombow goes well with these colors. Robin at Talks From The Heart sent me these stickers from Randy.Plans, so I'm just keeping them in the front. And this is my favorite sticker font ever. This is from Planner Monkey Co. And I believe it's called her minimal font, but these are clear scripts and I'm using them in my monthlies. So I've just been keeping those in the front here as well. So when you come in, there is that front page that doesn't open all of the way. I have glued it down as per usual. And here there is a spot for your key if you would like. I've been using the same key for so many years. I don't ever write it down unless somebody asks to see it. So what I've done instead is I've put my word for 2022, which is capable, and I've gone ahead and put down my six goals that I came up with when I completed my power sheets prep. So this year I want to work on unlocking my stress cycles and that directly ties into the book Burnout, which I am still reading by Emily and Amelia Nagoski. I want to prioritize sleep, cut down on the clutter, both mental and physical, focus on finances, contribute meaningfully, and create on YouTube. 
I always like having them with me so that I can glance at them whenever I need a reminder. Here, I actually, if you have ever ordered from Audrey Okea, you know that she sends her packages in these beautiful hand-done craft envelopes where she does collage. So I took part of that envelope because she had already done the beautiful collage. So the page was on it, the craft paper, these two stickers, and then I added some more Brandy Kincaid art that goes with this quote here. So this says, there are years that ask questions and years that answer them by Zora Neale Hurston. And this card came in that same mailer and says, whether this is a question year or an answer one, or maybe a little of both. I hope you learn to love the possibility of each, to make space for the questions and answers to surprise you now and then. And I've just been trying to lean into the uncertainty, guys. It's been an uncertain few years and I'm doing my best to live in the moment and carry on. So it does come with three index pages at the front here. It has the dividing line down the middle. You guys know I've always drawn that anyways. And I decided here to keep my yearly color palette going. I love choosing usually a Tombow of the month. It just makes my pages feel more cohesive to me and also eliminates the need for me to make a decision. So 451 for January, 942 for February. And I ordered a couple of these scripts from Planner Monkey Co. from her transparent mini line. I love these transparent mini stickers. And again, my favorite font ever. So I just went ahead and laid those down. They look beautiful. Right now it's February 18th, I believe I said, yes. And I still have a code with her. You can use LA15 to save until the end of this month. And if you get these stickers, I hope you love them as much as I do. Now is probably also a good time to say that it is the same script on these tabs here. Normally I don't tab the months, but because the monthlies here aren't all grouped together at the front of the planner, like they are in the Hobonichi A6, well, all the Hobonichis, the Weeks, the A6, the Cousin, these ones are embedded throughout. So I found it much easier to put tabs on to flip back and forth. I haven't decided if I will really use these indexes. I think if there's anything that I would like to find throughout my weekly dated spreads, I'll put it in here. But for the most part, I probably won't use this very much. We'll see though. Here we have the four year overview. I've never used this in any of my previous planners, so I don't really expect to here. I just put in a sticker from my Happy Planner Homebody sticker book that says staying in is not boring. I put that right on 2021 because that was another year that we did a lot of staying in. The yearly overview, it's spread across two pages here. I really love the simplicity of this notebook. I love the grayscale, the neutral colors, and just how clean and minimal it feels to me. So I decided this year that I would use this as a tracker for my kind of two big habits that I would love to cultivate. And the first one is intentional movement and the second is meditation. I'm going to be honest with you guys and show you a good look at this. I have meditated once and I have not done anything that I would consider intentional movement. When I was in the classroom, I was outside with the kids for an hour every day and we did a lot of daily dancing together. I never tracked that as intentional movement, but my body was still moving. Now that my contract is done, that's something I really want to prioritize again. I'm also keeping track of my cycle in here, so I just go ahead and write that in. These three stickers are all from Planner Monkey Co. and I just know the first one's movement, meditation, and then my cycle. I don't know what, if anything, I will use this bottom part for, but I'm totally fine with it just containing this information. 
I'm also trying out these Midori index clips. You've probably seen many people use them before. I've had these for ages. They're they're pretty small. I almost find them too small to get a good grip on, especially with this cover that where the lip kind of hangs over. But I'm trying it out and if I don't like it, I will just switch to sticky tabs and be totally fine with it. After that, we get a quarterly overview and I really like this little format. This would be really great for a future log and I'm still deciding if that's something I want to do in here because my initial thought was this would be a great place for me to get an overview of what I'm doing on YouTube, which in January was nothing. <laughs> but this is my first video, so I have a little sticker here, Planner Monkey Co. again. And I just wrote the date and the title of the video. Since this was in mid-February, I didn't bother putting any numbers. I haven't been consistent with that, but it is nice to track and just keep on top of. So I did go ahead and put Instagram, YouTube, and if I earn any money from Google AdSense. And we'll see how it goes. Again, I might still go through and put in birthdays here, but I don't think I need to see those in advance. I think having those in my monthly spread will be enough. So I will play around with it, but for now, I definitely want to use it to track my YouTube videos. I did draw this line here. You guys know I love a good line separating my, well, it's not a signifier in this case, but my dates from the titles. It just feels easier for my eye to follow. So first quarter, second, third, and fourth. I will say here, these notebooks seem to be great quality. I haven't had any issues with them, but you can see that the binding isn't quite as tightly sewn, I guess, stitched as it is in the Hobonichi. So there are spaces where you can see quite a bit of the thread. Hopefully that's not an issue. I don't anticipate it being, but I will point it out. The Tomoe River paper, I don't think I mentioned that. So this is also 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. It is not the same as the Hobonichi paper. I don't know if this is the new paper or if it's just from a different supplier or manufacturer. I really don't know anything about that process. But even though this is thin and crinkly and I really like it, it does have more bleed through and feathering than my Hobonichi paper ever has. So just a heads up and something to be aware of. Then we move into monthly trackers. So this planner actually starts in November, same as Hobonichi, and it gives you a tracker starting in November through the end of 2022. So you've got the days and they give you the initial of the day of the week. And I really, really love this. So I haven't used this for anything. Obviously I didn't start this until January. But what I've done is I have just transferred my power sheets information right in here. So in the power sheets, if you're not familiar with it, it has a section for monthly goals, weekly action items, and daily action items. So the monthly is just a progress bar. So a couple of things I wanted to get done. Something I'd like to do every week. Again, showing you guys some real pictures. I track it, but I just don't always do it and that's okay. Something's better than nothing. And my dailies. I did switch it up for February and just put the dailies at the top. Like I did daily, monthly, weekly, just because I found it easier to line it up. So, you know, one's right here instead of having to follow it down. I, it's, a very, it's a very small thing. Am I even in frame? Sorry, sorry guys. But anyways, so these are February's goals that I'm working on. I hand lettered this one. Oh, let me show you. So I used the Tombow Funosuke hard tip here. Oh, I, this one actually didn't bleed through too badly. There's a tiny, tiny spot, but I'll show you on another section. This is where I'm using the other set of the scripts from Planner Monkey Co. So I've just gone ahead and done my Tombow underneath and script on top. And I'm just writing any monthly tasks that don't fit into the week I'm in. I'm just coming and writing them here. So ideally, this is tabbed. I'm visiting it every day to keep an eye on my habits. Same with this one, my overview. So 
so it finishes in December. And then at the end, there's a notes page and November overview before the monthly. So, okay, let's not look at this as a blank month. I'll show you one, but I will tell you that I've decided to use November and December as my kind of scratch pages. So anything that I just need to scribble out, any notes that I wanna write, when I'm writing notes for videos, it'll go in this section. And I think that will work really, really well for me. I don't want it to be wasted space. So I figure scratch notes, things I don't really need to revisit, this is where they'll go. That is actually more for the weekly section, the monthlies. I am really liking trying my pen tests in here and seeing how my Tombow colors work, my Stabilos, Sailor Shikiori. I like having them in their own squares and it's just a nice place to keep it all together. So this one I've tabbed at the bottom. It keeps coming loose though, but we'll see how that one works. Just an easy way to get here some notes, a birthday list for somebody, and then the weeklies. Okay, so let's go now to January. So before each month, you have a review for the previous month, so December review and January overview. As you can see, I didn't do anything here. I started this, I think, probably right on January 1st, so there wasn't much prep. In terms of the monthly, again, very clean. You kind of have the light gray headers for the month. Here you can see the dates of the previous month, but they are not gray. And then the weekends themselves are also gray. They have some holidays in a very kind of neutral font at the bottom. And when there are six weeks, they divide the bottom row in half where needed. So for me, I'm just keeping this very simple. I put in some stickers, Planner Monkey Co., Audrey Okea. I'm putting in birthdays and any kind of big events. So I knew we had a PA day. We were going back to in-person for school. I had an appointment and report cards were due. Other than that, I'm not really using this for anything and that works totally fine. I'm going ahead, if I know something, jotting it in with pencil and then kind of finalizing it when I get to that month, unless it's something that doesn't need to be finalized like a birthday, in which case I will put that right in. And then we get to see the weekly setup. So my biggest concern and what I consider the biggest downside of this system is that the weekend is stacked. And I know that a lot of people don't work Monday to Friday schedules and they need a full day for both Saturday and Sunday. And I totally understand that. I wanted to try, I figured I could maybe get away with it because when I'm in the classroom, I am working Monday to Friday. And this section up here and these sections down here, I don't really, well, this one I kind of do, but I don't really consider them part of each day. And when I looked at it that way, like it's not, that much of a difference it's still a difference but I don't know that was how I rationalized it to myself and so far there haven't been any problems so fingers crossed here I was just started again starting it right on the first I didn't go back and back plan any of this and I have been using a mix of my style, my original bullet journal style. So you'll see I have my same key. I still keep tasks in here, memories, little icons if I'm watching a movie or TV. And I've been playing around and figuring out how to use this bottom section. Here is my first full week. And guys, I really have fun with this. So right now it is still evolving, but right now I am using this top section for anything important or out of the ordinary. So birthdays, meetings, anything like that. Down here, I am doing tasks and memory keeping. And at the bottom, I'm treating it like different sections. I am very heavily inspired by Martha Plans, so I will definitely link her Instagram down below. And if you are interested in a Wonderland 222, I would definitely suggest checking out her content. She has used both the B6 and A6 and compares them in size and it's just so beautiful and clean. 
So anyways, here I have some Instagram posts I wanted to get up this week, a to-do list, and the rest of it just right in here. One thing that I did change about my key is I really wanted to distinguish my work tasks from my personal tasks and I wasn't sure how to do that. Originally, I thought maybe I would use different sections. So I'm not sure how well it picks up on camera, but you can kind of see that there's a line here and a line here dividing this into three equal sections. And I think I read one of the creators of Wonderland 222 say that's in case you want to do kind of a morning, afternoon, evening setup, or maybe if you want to do, you know, work, personal, fun, whatever your case may be. I thought about it. I realized that just doesn't work with my style of planning. And so I still have the dot or the bullet for personal tasks, and I've just done an open square for work tasks. I check them both off with the X still, but that just lets me know at a glance in a really easy way what is a work task and what is a personal task. So worked really, really well for me. Love using my icons, Planner Monkey Co., Paper Bits Co., Swatelier. This is when we move to virtual learning, so I just use my Tombow of the Month to highlight that. You can see, carry that on here. I have a couple of birthdays at the top. Don't know how much I love this. I think I might have changed it after. Here I decided to leave these three sections for to-do lists. Although so far I've never made it into three columns. Here, Instagram again, some stickers from Sticky Club. I love using the little icon stickers just to give me that pop, let me know what I was doing with cute little doodles. Here we had, we were supposed to go back to in-person but we had 35 centimeters of snow so we were back to virtual teaching for those two days. Put it this way, we have some Create with Pen stickers here. It's all adorable. This one I love, I simply cannot. That was, when we went back to in-person, some students were still virtual. They were given the choice and that meant that I had to teach to the students that were physically in the classroom and to students who were at home at the same time and it was incredibly difficult. It's, you know, schools aren't set up for that kind of teaching and learning, but we got there, right? but the first few days were exhausting, trying to figure out the schedule and the logistics. Here, working on reports, that's from Pumpkin Paper Co., that's how I felt. Same with this work washi from the Coffee Monsters Co. And here it was when I finished my reports, feeling very proud of myself. That's once more with love. Here I had reports due, an appointment. So I'm still using red for appointments. And it's just, again, at a glance, much, much easier to see. This was my last day at the school. Uh, and here is where you can see hopefully some bleeding through from the other side. So moving from January to February, I tried something new with these pages. I used the same monthly reflection that I used for most of 2021 for January here. I didn't use all of the categories. I didn't have the space. So I just cut it down to the specifics that spoke to me. So reading, watching, listening, creating, planning, needing, wanting, loving, not loving, wishing, trying, and inspired. And then I decided for February overview, it would be really nice to do a looking ahead reflection. So what would make this month fun? What would make this month satisfying? Where do I wanna be at the end of the month? And how do I want to feel at the end of the month? I didn't plan to put stickers here, but for some reason I thought I could fit these questions in these two lines and anyways, it did not work. So I just put a, put a sticker on top of that and I like how that turned out. I did think actually of putting kind of memories from January in these three boxes and I didn't get to it, but I would love to do that for February. So we will see how that goes. 
Again, February, very, very simple. Birthday, a little sticker for Valentine's Day. I have an appointment. I am just putting these down as I go because I'm having a lot of fun just deciding where to put them, what little bits of ephemera I wanna add. And in the past, I've done it all in advance and I still did in my Hobonichi uh, A6, which I will eventually share as well. But for this one, I'm doing it as I go. This is a sticker that my friend Shelby sent me with a local to her term, which is super cute, and a couple of old stickers that I had. And here we go. This week, for some reason, I didn't get to doing an Instagram list or a to-do list, so I just put some washi down here. I have another, create. oh, the Create With Pen subscription opens. Oh, I did sign up for that, so I'm really excited to give that a try. I was reading, that's Planner Monkey Co., the Style Planner, birthday. I can't remember where this one is from, but what is really nice is that Hobonichi Cousin Kits do fit really well in here, or at least I consider them fitting really well. You can see here there is a little space left on the sides of the box so they don't go directly to the edges of the column. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I actually kind of like it that way. It just feels even cleaner to me to have that little border of white. But Just so you know, if you're someone like me who ordered a bunch of kits and then switched out of the planner they were made for, the Hobonichi Cousin Kits will fit here really, really nicely. And I had messaged Martha from Martha Plans to ask her what she was using because her pen always looked so nice and dark. And here I was using the Uni Jet Stream all the way up to here I was using it. And she told me she used a fine liner. So I was using the Le Pen Technical Drawing Pen here and really enjoy the look of it. I do find that I don't feel as free or carefree maybe when I'm writing with a fine liner and it's because of that needle tip and my death grip and heavy handedness but I still had fun with it and I really like how that worked so I am trying a few different pens so this is a kit from the iris designs and I love it it's just beautiful this sticker is from planner monkey co and if you watched my instagram stories guys I I always think I'm doing so great with fountain pens and learning and I filled up the wrong end of the Twisby. I I don't even know. I can't even tell you what I was thinking. I had a tiny sample vial. I couldn't get the nib in it. So I opened it from the back, filled the space, closed it up, tr tried to figure out why it wasn't writing or reaching the feed and then just emptied it, accidentally watered the ink down before it got back in. Hey, it writes, but it's, yeah, it's, I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's, it's commemorated in here because sometimes all you can do is laugh. It's so frustrating at the time, but so funny after. Some more paper bits go. To-do list. Oh, that's from Planner Monkey Co. It's transparent and it comes with the like neutral swatch behind it, which I loved. I also put a little envelope there because I was expecting some happy mail watch the Super Bowl or, you know, watch the halftime show and planned while the Super Bowl was on. And then that brings us to this week. So this week I'm actually using my Pilot Metropolitan with the fine nib. And this is the Diatramentus Archive Ink in black. So I'm really liking that as well. I'm finding that they're both nice and dark used another sticker. This is still from that same kit from the Iris Designs. I really like the little hints of pink, but it's kind of like a neutral pink and taupe. And you know, the hearts there, perfect for Valentine's Day, I thought. I had a sampler from the Iris Designs and the sampler had the color of the foiling, which was antique gold. So I had a lot of fun cutting out the word gold for the Canadian women's hockey team there. And then I also have my tab here on the date that I'm currently on. So I did also share this on Instagram stories, but I have trouble committing to tabs. I didn't know if I would like them. I was pretty afraid of positioning them. So I just put them on a post-it tab that I cut down to size. I folded it over and everything. 
and I'm really happy with that. I like knowing that I can take them off or adjust them if I need to. And let me tell you, I, I mean, my hat is tipped to all of you who can put on tabs that are not removable because I had to adjust these so many times. Granted, it was my first time putting them on, but still, I was I was very thankful to myself for for going with removable first because it there's a learning curve. So, just just so everyone knows. So that is how the rest of the year goes. And then I have a couple of tabs left and I will show you what I've done here. So I've decided that I would use the back section. I think there's, okay, so 211 to 288. Right, so 70 something pages. I figured this would be great for daily and rapid logging if I needed more space than is in the weeklies. So far, I haven't, especially because I add to kind of that running task list at the bottom, but I love that it's an option. So I took out my trusty stamps from Amazon. I will do my best to link everything that I've mentioned below and the Versa Magic Chalk Ink. And I decided to do another index here just for this back section. And I called this log because I'm not sure if it's going to be daily logs just rapid logging lists and I just like the idea of logging things so I thought that was a nice kind of name that would encompass everything that ended up back here and then I've done something that I've never tried but I've seen plenty of people do and that is start their collections from the back so I I did put a tab to kind of the first page but I will well, yeah, let's start here. So I'm going to do a baseball schedule spread whenever the schedule is released. Fingers crossed that we get a full baseball season this year, guys. I will be so sad if we don't. And this is my favorite spread possibly that I've ever done. This is my Marvel rewatch spread. I started this last year in April. And I just found some doodles online and then I went ahead and used a little circle stencil from a Hobonichi or was it a Jibun Techo? I think it was a Hobonichi stencil. I have a little reel on, on this on Instagram, but then I just drew in the characters and they're adorable and it was much simpler than it looks. I just had to use my finest pencil and finest fine liner and I used some pencil crayons that I just had to sharpen to it to a point and yeah it is so cute you can see I'm a good way through it again started it last April so I've been I've been taking my time and it is fun I just check it off when I'm done I write down the day I finished it because I don't always watch one movie in one sitting and who I watched it with if I watched it with anyone so really really happy with that spread and I do think I will finish this list this year. Here is a list for watching. I haven't put anything here but we did start watching Cobra Kai this year so that'll go here. Any movies that we end up watching. Closet. So I decided I would try to track anything that came in and anything that goes out. In an ideal world, I would like to have a one in one out system. This was inspired by Lindsay Scribbles and also some slow fashion and sustainable content creators that I follow. So the thing is, I am still in the process of doing a huge declutter. And I don't want to track everything that's leaving here because that feels like cheating. I feel like this is more for when I have a more curated selection already and then I'm really intentional about bringing in new things and letting things go. But we'll see. I will still try and use this, I think, but we'll see how it goes. Just drew a line down the middle with the ballpoint, in and out. So I want to do the same thing for planner goodies, probably planner covers especially. Again, I've been doing a big D stash. I have some friends and family who also enjoy stickers and stationary items. So that's where that's been going and other. 
I'm not sure now that I'm saying this, maybe purses or something like that, although that could still be a closet item. But I do have it here as a catch-all just in case. And then I just have a couple of those sections at the back. So anything that's work-related, any questions, any research I need to do, anything personal, and anything planner-related. And for me, planner, it also includes YouTube and Instagram. So here I was trying to figure out I knew I wanted to figure out what tabs I was doing. Can I do stamping in here? What do I want to use as a closure, bookmarks, etc. Speaking of bookmarks, this does come with two ribbon bookmarks that are nice. I just never ever use them. I ended up just washi taping them to the back, which is something I saw my friend Maria do. Usually I cut them out and I might still, we'll see, but sometimes the little frayed edge bothers me. I get as close as I can, but sometimes it is still not close enough. And I did get this book in case my dailies ran over and I needed more space. I figured this was thin enough that I could keep them both together in a cover and not have it be too bulky. Nicole at, oh, I believe it's Notes by Nicole, uses both together and she has them in a Moterm and it looks really, really functional. So I'm really glad to have this as an option. And this here is just a plain notebook. So you've got the key, one index page, and then it starts. It has kind of this section up here if you wanna write a date per page. And then it has a timeline and these kind of faint dividing boxes. The pages are numbered. Again, there's bookmarks and 189 pages. So really happy with that option. I have noticed, I feel like I'm being a little bit precious about not wanting to write in like the log section back here, but then I'm not actually sure what I would have written. So I just have to keep an eye on myself and remember to use it. The planner is here to be used. And so far it's working really, really well for me. It is a little funny to me that I got this largely because I was in the classroom and I need that overview and then my contract ended and I'm not in the classroom, but I still like this format and just having it all done for me. Do I miss my A5 bullet journal? Yes, I definitely do, but I'm getting a lot of enjoyment from this right now. So this is where I am and we'll see how it goes. I did tell you I would show the cover that I'm using. So this is a cover that I asked somebody on Instagram to make for me. This is Editing Ellie here. I totally forgot to mention the owner by name and include her Instagram handle. So this is a custom B6 folio and it's by Veronica at My Leather Habit on Instagram. It is absolutely gorgeous. She picked out the pieces with the most striations for this front pocket and the back and I love it and will show you more details in a moment. I honestly this is such a strange story but I was asking on reddit about leathers and someone responded and I checked out her work on Instagram and I loved it. So she just does this as a hobby and it was so much fun to work with her. So this is entirely custom even down to ordering the leather. This is a beautiful, very, very thin cover. She kept it extremely thin for me. I think her stitching is beautiful. There's a snap, this is a pocket. And I'll tell you what I was thinking. Okay, so first it does fit with the clear cover. So I just wanted it very, very simple. In the front here, I am just using those kits that I was mentioning. So you can see these kits are very generous. I have some old Create With Pen. All these winter ones that I've used so far, I'm just keeping in the front. I asked for a slip pocket here and I just have my goals. I had originally stamped this on here and thought maybe I would use it inside, but I didn't like how that looked, so I left it in the front there. A secretarial in case I need it. And this was inspired by Aura Estelle. So this is two elasticated pen loops. This is one of the things that I would change. So Veronica was amazing. She involved me in the process every step of the way and I would just make some changes now knowing probably 
I might ask her to include like a, I don't know, a layer of something here so that this bump wasn't so pronounced from the snap. That said, it doesn't bother me. I might also consider doing one of those belt closures where it just slides in because I like the idea of having the flexibility with how tight the strap is or not. Originally, we were going to have this pocket go from top to bottom and just be sewn on the seam, but she didn't want to make it too thick. She loves having the thin ones and yeah, I'm not going to lie. I love how thin this is too. The leather is really, really beautiful. I believe it's a Minerva box cognac leather, although don't quote me on that. In the back as well, you can see there's some lovely striations. Well, you can kind of see my lights are there. This is pretty wide, so I might not ask for the pen loops like this again. That said, it's not, it doesn't bother me at all but I don't know if it will at some point. I would probably just do maybe a traditional pen loop and then the other one I could always kind of clip on, but I do really like having a space for both my pen of choice and my Tombow. And the Tombow is almost the exact size of the cover. It's a little bit shorter, so that works really well. The elastics too, I, I might consider getting them a little bit wider and a little bit, uh, shorter, I guess, just for more flexibility. These fit fine. This is my Pilot Metropolitan and this is my Tombow, but my Le Pen Technical Drawing Pen, I like it because it has a bigger barrel, but it's a huge pain to get in and out of here. So I probably wouldn't do that again. And the reason that I wanted a pocket on the front is because you'll have seen me with this last year in my bullet journal, but one of these Hobonichi card files, I often like to keep a selection of my Planner Monkey Co. stickers in here and, you know, Coffee Monsters Co. A few can fit in the front and back. And this fits really well in here. She checked that for me before we started. I mean, if it gets really bulky, obviously it will bulk it up quite a bit. But I just really like having that as an option and keeping everything together. So I think she did an absolutely beautiful job. Again, she does this as a hobby and, you know, crafts items for herself and for the lucky people who come across her, I guess, and message her totally out of the blue. But I have loved having my cover in here. I do also have another cover on the way for my birthday. It's not a surprise because I specifically requested, I think I even, yeah, I ordered it for myself, order notes and everything, but I haven't seen it. So I will also share that when it arrives. That ended up being a much longer video than I expected. It was chatty. I missed you guys. It's nice to feel like I'm sharing this passion and hobby with people who enjoy it as much as I do. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them down below. And if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.